All right, guys. Um, where did did we do? We just did the first two yesterday, correct? All right, so here's what we're going to do. If you guys will do me a favor, if you will add a page between these two particular uh, these particular sheets, so down here between these two. So I'm going to walk you through the first three today, and then after we do the first three, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make sure that you know how to do these last five. Okay, We are testing on this material on Friday, so it's, it's time to kind of get on board of knowing exactly what's going on. So let's do the first three together. So the first one again, and, and I'll come. I'm going to do some of the work here. That's why I'm asking you to add a page, and then we'll go back and we'll fill out the rest of it. So we've got H two S. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, just like always, we list what elements are present and how many of each we have. How many hydrogens are present? Okay. So we've got two hydrogens and one sulfur. Uh, matter of fact, Brett, do me a favor. Will you pass out these? We're going to need, there's me, not Brett Blaze. I'm used to you sitting right there. No, you're good. No, you're good. Do you have anything to write this down with? If you don't have your iPad, you need to write down this on a sheet of paper. Nope. You need to physically write this down on a sheet of paper. Yes, ma'am. Re hold it. Re restart it. Okay. All right. So how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? One. And hydrogen and sulfur has six. So we've got two, we've got six, we've got how many total? Eight. Eight total. All right, now Massimo, who is in the middle of this compound? Yep, S, very good. All right, so we've got S. Now, how many atoms, Brett, am I going to have to connect to this S? How many atoms am I going to have to connect? Less than six. How many, Brett? Hey, Zeus, how many? Two. two, thank you, sir, because I've only got two hydrogens. Now, would you agree that this is an appropriate way to connect them so far? Yes. The reason it's appropriate is because based on the rule, atoms want to get as blank apart as possible, as far apart as possible. So this is as far apart as we can get them. Now, here's the issue that students run into. Sir. Do this so far. Okay, we're going to go back to that thing and fill it in. So the problem is the students, once they finish this, they sometimes they don't go back and adjust it. And we'll talk about the adjustment at the very end. But right now, this is the kind of the rule that we're going to follow. All right, so, uh, Anijah, of my eight total electrons, how many have I used so far in that orange drawing? Four, very good. So I've got four left. Now here's the problem, okay? Mr. Dismukes, how many of the four that we have remaining can go to hydrogen? None of them. Okay, so Blaze, these four got to go to who? Got to go to sulfur. How am I going to give them to the sulfur? Dots. But dots always must come in pairs. Very good. So I'm going to give, go ahead, Anaja. Okay, how many electrons up there on the periodic table, how many does hydrogen have? It only has one, right? But if it gains one more, who does it look like? It looks like helium. So it's good. So that it only needs two. So with that line, means it already has two. You with me? Okay, very good. So here's the problem. When we do this, a lot of you say, that looks good. The, the electrons are far apart. The atoms are far apart. That's all wonderful. But the problem is, in what world do we just draw this? The 2D. We've got to get it in 3D. So again, if you will commit to that Vesper sheet, if you do the A, B model. So my question is, Lily, you're up next. How many atoms are bonded to S? Two. Okay. Tristan, do I have any E's? Okay. E's are e electron pairs on which atom, everybody? The central atom. Do you have any electron pairs on the central atom? How many? Two. So if you will look at that Vesper info sheet and look up A, B, 2, E, 2, then what shape should this be? Bent. Very good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to this page, and I'm going to fill in all this information. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Pretty much, yes. You will not have it on the test. Yeah, I've told you all that in the beginning. So, A stands for the central atom. B stands for the bonded atoms, and E is the electron pairs 
on the central atom. Go ahead, ask your question. Yes, ma'am. You see those you see those five blue words over there? Excuse me, six blue words? You have to know the bottom five. We're gonna talk about IMFs tomorrow. No, because those two go together. Yeah, the bottom five. You gotta have a shape name, the angle of hybridization, the molecule polarity, and the IMF. Guys, y'all put y'all are missing a very important information. So for the test, you've got to know those bottom five. But here's the deal. The reason I say you don't have to know the top one is because if you know the top one, you automatically know the shape name. So they go hand in hand. All you have to write is the name of the shape. I'm a hundred million percent certain that you can't use that sheet. Bring it to me, Lauren. Well, then I'm not going to be able to help you right now, then. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this. So H2S. We've already said that we've got two bonded atoms and we've got two electron pairs and you've already told me that the shape of this thing was bent. Now the next part is all on you. I can't do anything but continue to show you practice and practice and practice. What is the bond angle for something that is bent? 105 degrees. Okay. Now, we need to redraw this thing perfect. Well, I'm going to come back to hybridization in a second. So. Instead of drawing it like this orange molecule that's right here in the middle of the right, middle of this page, we need to draw it correctly according to our Vesper theory. So when we draw it, what do we need to do to those um, those hydrogens? Bend them down. Very good. So S is going to have the hydrogens bent off to the side, and those two long pair are going to be kind of sticking off the top of S like antenna. Okay. So that is going to be our hybridization, excuse me, that is going to be our correct Lewis structure. I'm telling you now, if you draw it like this purple one, as you see right here on the screen, this is correct. This orange one is incorrect. You would receive no credit for that. No credit at all. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, that's a great question. Remember, what? how are we drawing this? What world are we drawing it in? 2D. Remember, if it's 3D, it would have different depths to it. Just accept it for what it is. Okay? All right, now. Yes, sir. Memorize. That's it. That's the only way you got to... If you think, if you think about it, there's, there's really only... There's 180. There's 120. 105. 109.5. And 107. Okay, and 90. The shape. The shape has a specific angle. Every shape has a specific angle. That is, that also will tell you. The ABA, the ABE, the shape, and the bond angle all go together. Yes. That whole row. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. All right, here's the last thing. The hybridization, stay with me, guys. So remember, and I'm just going to draw it on this one because it'll be the same. It's just rearranged. So if we draw, whenever you draw flower petals, do you draw them only around atoms? So if we draw it only around atoms, if, if we did that, we're wrong, but what would it be if it were this? SP. So we got to include that, and we got to include that. So what is the correct hybridization? It's P3. Very good. Okay, if you don't remember how to do that, you're going to have to spend some time going back and figuring that out. So that's P3. No, I've already I've explained it three days in a row. Okay. Now, the question is, this, la this second to last column is the uh, bond polarity. So if you look at sulfur and hydrogen, just, and again, I'm just going to circle this. Do not do this. I'm just talking about this right here. Is 
H or S, the same electronegative value? No, which one's more electronegative? S. So that means that the bonds themselves are polar. Okay. Now also, these two are also polar. So what direction are all those electrons going in? They're all going towards the sulfur, right? So is one end more, electro, more electron heavy than the other? Yes, that means this entire thing is also polar. Whichever, if there is an end that's more electron heavy than it is polar. And I'm going to show you another example in just a second. We'll get there. No, I'm only going to ask you about the very last column. Okay, so if you notice up there in blue, it says molecule polarity. That's how it's going to be worded on the test. Oh, we're going to get there. I promise we'll get there. Exactly. I'm going to give you something like this. you got to draw it tell me all this stuff. That's all you got to do. I mean, really, what's your see? The only thing we're going to add tomorrow is the intermolecular force, and you have three options. you got a 33% chance of getting it right. I mean, you've, you've, and the good news is one of them is hydrogen bonding. What does it have to have for hydrogen bonding? A hydrogen. Well, duh, well, if it doesn't have hydrogen, guess what? You're 50-50. <laughs> I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's only three options it can be. No, I'm going to, you're not going to be here tomorrow? Okay, well, then you'll hear it tomorrow. Yes. That's only for angular. Only for angular is at less than 120. Yes, trigonal planar is exactly 120. And here's how you know that. Massimo, if you think about this, if you take a circle and you cut it into three equal pieces, what's, what symbol is that? It's a piece symbol, right? So if you took 360 degrees and divided it by three, every piece, if it were perfectly drawn, obviously, would be 120 degrees. So that's how you know trigonal planar, trigonal, three different pieces. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay. All right. Now, so let's go back and let's do HCN. And again, I'm going to swap to this other page and be able and draw it for you because this one's going to be a little funky. HCN. Again, list what we got. We got H, we got C, we got N. Okay. Uh, Michael, we'll start with you. How many H's? How many C's? How many N's? One. Okay. Robin, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? One. What about carbon? Four. And what about nitrogen? Five. Very good. Okay. Mr. Um, Howard, well, I've got one, I've got four, and I've got five. How many total do I have? Ten. Now, let me ask you something real quick, just thinking about it. This bottom number. What can it never be? Can never be odd. You just said more than eight. It's ten. Okay. All right. So we'll talk about. Yes, that means you're going to have a plus or minus somewhere. Okay. Now. Yes, we're we're going to get there. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Next, who's always in the center if it's there? Carbon's always in the center. All right, Baker. How many atoms am I attaching to carbon? Two atoms. So how do I want to attach them? We only bend it after we after we make adjustments. Okay? Alright. Ash Winnie, how many of my ten did I just use? Just use four. So I've got how many left, Ash Winnie? I've got six left. Alright, Robert. I've got six left. Of my six that are left, who will get none of them? Hydrogen, very good. So I've got six left. How many more does nitrogen need? Nitrogen needs six more, right? How am I going to give them the nitrogen? In what way? In pairs, very good. So two, go ahead, Anaja. Okay. Why does what? All right, because let's think about it. This line represents how many? Two. How many does it need total? It needs eight total, right? Well, it already had two. Well, how many more does it need? Remember, all electrons, all atoms except boron, need at least eight. Mm -mm. Yes, ma'am. No, fill up the outer first. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to get there. Hold on one second, okay? So, so far, I've used two, 
four, six, eight, ten. And Brandon, that's a very important point. You always fill up outer and then work your way back in. Okay. So do you agree that I've used all of my electrons? All right. So Massimo, you asked the important question, but Terrell, I'm going to come to you. Could I leave this just like this? Why? What's wrong? No. Look at carbon. What's wrong with carbon? How many more does it need? It needs four more. Well, here's the problem. Do I have four more to give it? No, that means I'm going to have to borrow from somebody else. Who has some more that I can borrow from? Nitrogen. All right, so let's do this. So if I take these two from nitrogen and I move them over to make a double bond. Now, nitrogen still has its eight, right? But let's look at carbon. It's still, it's still out, right? What you got to do, Massimo? Very good, Massimo. Okay. So here is the big deal. Here's the question I always get. How do you know when to double or triple bond? And this is important that you hear this. You only double or triple bond when you are completely out of electrons and one of them is not stable. That's when you have to borrow some. Do you agree I was completely out? Well, I couldn't give carbon anymore. Well, where do you have to get them from if you don't have any more to give it? you got to share them. you got to borrow them from somebody else. Go ahead. Boron. Boring boron, right? Matter of fact, Dalton told me that in a uh, quiz bowl the other day, that actually was a question. Which element only needs six valence electrons to be stable? And he knew that because of that. Yes, sir. That's This is for, for molecules. It's just hydrogen needs two and boron needs six. Everything is now. Let me ask you this. Is it possible that some can have more than eight? Yes, remember we talked about Peter, Sips, Chlorine, Acetylene, Breaks, Crowns, Telepathic, Lumen, X-Men, right? Those are the ones that can have expanded. But don't worry about that. You'll know if, if, it, if it's got more than eight, just go ahead and run with it. Okay? Make sure it at least has eight. And if it goes beyond eight, then ask. Okay? All right. So my question is, ask me. Yeah. Is there anything we need to do to adjust this thing? It is 3D. There's nothing that's going to move this thing. Matter of fact, let me ask you this. If I do A, B, how many atoms are bonded to carbon? Two. Two. Does it have any E's on carbon? No. no. So if you use your Vesper sheets, if I got it out looking at it? Yes. Okay. Massimo, who is A, B, 2? Very good. This is linear. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. This is going to be 2. This is 0. This is linear. And I'm going to come back over here and redraw this thing. So I've got hydrogen bonded to carbon, which is triple bonded to nitrogen in these two little dots out here. So I've got two questions that always come up. Number one is does it matter which side hydrogen and nitrogen go on? What do you think? Nope, doesn't matter at all. And the second question is do the those little dots out there beside nitrogen have to go on the end of it? No, but remember, how do electrons want to get from each other? As far away as possible. And so that's why I put them out here on the outside. Okay. No, no, if you, and again, if you commit to the ABE model, if you look up AB2, what shape does it tell you? It tells you it's linear. So you draw it like a straight line. But you, that's why you've got to know. You've got to know it. You've got to know it. There's no other way you can do that. Okay? That's your fault. I promise you, you're going to have enough of these to practice. You better know them. Okay? I don't know what you're talking about. You have to show it to me. All right, last thing. Last thing. Okay. Um, Natalie, what is the bond angle of a straight line? 180. All right, Maya, if we come back to this and we draw flower petals, how many do I need? One around the hydrogen and one around the nitrogen. Is that it? Do I need any more? Well, carbon is the center, right? You draw it just off the center. So, what is the first petal? S, and what's the next one? P. I'm not explaining this again. Okay. All right. So, hybridization is S, P. Yes. It would be beneficial if you know how to do it. All right. So, my last question is, 
If you focus on hydrogen and carbon, is one of these more electronegative than the other? Yes. yes. What about carbon and nitrogen? Yes. So the bonds are polar, and is there one end that's more polar than the other? Yes. What direction are all those electrons flowing? To the nitrogen. Very good. To the right, to the right. So we got polar there. All right. So, Nigel, we've got two things that have been polar on both, right? Here's where I'm going to answer your question that you asked a minute ago. What happens when it's nonpolar? So you're fixing to see that example. Okay. So we've got CCl4. What's, will you let them in, please? Okay. All right. So how many carbons, Brett? One carbon. Uh, how many valence? Four. All right. I've got four chlorines. What's the valence? What's 4 times 7, everyone? 28. And 28 plus 4 is? 32. All right. So, Marquise, who's always in the center if you see him? Carbon's always going to be in the middle. Okay. Now, here's the deal. I've got four chlorines I've got to hook up to this thing, right? Now, do you think it's a good idea to hook them up in a plus sign or a cross? No. This is all in school with you, if you all want it. Okay. No. So, we already know that you've got four of them to hook up. So let's go ahead and do it the right way. So I've got CL, 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 CL. All right. Lauren, I've got 32 total. How many did I just use out of my 32? Eight. So 32 minus eight, everyone, is? 24. Wait on me. You got them all? Spectacular. Did you save it? Awesome. Good deal. All right. So here's the deal. Now, this is going to take some math. Sharon, I'm going to go with you. How many more does each chlorine need? This is Sharon. It's Sharon only. Six, right? Well, how many chlorines do I have? Well, if four of them need six, then how many do I need total? Six times four. How many do I have left? Well, that means I'm going to be out, right? So what do I do to all those chlorines? Give them all their dots. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. No, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. So the good news is I'm completely out. Are all of the chlorines happy and stable? What about the thing in the middle? How do you know? It's already got its eight. So this thing doesn't need any more adjusting. It is done. It is completely finished. So the one thing that I want to ask you is if you do this, A, B, what? Four. Are there any E's? Now, here's the problem. I get this every year. I get someone who puts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I put. I have people who put 12 E's. Why is that wrong? It's not on the center. So A, B, 4, you already know the shape of this because we've done this a lot of times. So what's the shape of this thing? Good. I'm just going to write tetra just for space sake. Um, we know that this was 4. We know that this was 0. You guys know how to fill it in in here. Now, this is the part where you actually have to put some time in to memorize it. Massimo, what is the bond angle of a tetrahedral molecule? Thank you, sir. 109.5. Now, since you're the one that does not know how to do hybridization, I'm going to go back to this. What do you draw flower petals around? Okay. Do you also include dots around the center one? But if, if there were dots, like electron pairs around the center, would you also include those? Yes. Okay. So we're going to do this. We've got a flower petal there. So I've got four petals, right? So what's my hybridization? So I've got S, P1, P2, P3. So SP3. Yep, they're just because. No, I'm making, I'm, there's a reason. There is a reason. Yes, sir. Uh, you would do both. I'm never going to ask you about trigonal bipyramidal. I want to ask you the angle of those. Good, glad. All right, last question. If we go back, and I'm going to erase all, all this. All right, so here's what I want to ask you. 
And Isa, since you asked this question, I'm going to ask you. If I look at just what's in that green petal, is one of those more electronegative than the other? Say yes. Yes. Who's more electronegative? So do you agree that all of these bonds are going to be polar? So the bonds are polar, but here's the problem. How are all of these chlorines pulling from the carbon? In opposite directions, right? So is one side of this going to be stronger than the other? Hand me that red, that red black thing. Let's just pretend that carbon's black and chlorine's red. Is one of these sides going to be stronger than the other? So even though the bond is polar, what is the entire molecule? Nonpolar. Does that make sense? You with me? No? Because no matter which red is pulling on the black, is one of the reds any stronger than the other red? So it's creating an equal pull. So the entire thing has to be nonpolar. Does that help? Yes, ma'am, it was. But you've got to remember. So, all right, that's a good question. To make this, that thing on the board look like this thing, is there one side that's stronger than the other? The top side is. Because sulfur is more electronegative than the red. It's pulling them in that direction. You with me? Does that help? Okay. All right, so that one's polar. So here's what I want you to do. I want you, by yourself, independently, attempting to work the rest of these. Okay? Again, you can do this. I promise. Okay? Here we go. And I'm going to come around, and I'll be kind of helping you in and out. 